Hi folks, it's Jay. I just want to talk to you about intellectual honesty and thorough scholarship. The importance of intellectual honesty and, and solid scholarship is, is really important today and that is for the Christian as well as the skeptic. Um, an example is an atheist might come along and this is pro positive atheist. Uh, I'm not being negative against the atheist on this on this situation. The atheist comes along and says, look, there's a contradiction in the Bible. Look at Genesis chapter 1 and 2, Adam and Eve. Um, there seems to be contradictions in the narrative there, uh, etc. Now, the, uh, the Christian comes along and says, oh, well, no, I'm sorry, there isn't uh, a contradiction. Actually, uh, some parts of that Genesis 1 is is kind of uh, allegorical, but some of it is literal in chapter 2, and so there isn't really a contradiction, but it's literally true, but it's, it, 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 it's you know, some of it's sort of allegorical, so there's not really a contradiction there. From an atheist perspective, if I was hearing that, then I would just think that would be disingenuous and lacking intellectual integrity and intellectual honesty. And so we've got to be careful to be intellectually honest and not to try and get out of problems uh, when so, when an atheist or a skeptic brings something up to, to squirm out of it just because it suits us, because we can play the allegorical card. Um, you know, so I think that, you know, one has to be honest, intellectually honest and fair when a question like that that comes up and I've studied Genesis chapter 1 and 2 uh, you know this is just a general talk about um, one's approach um, if you want me to go into detail I'll go into detail um, but the you know I've studied Genesis 1 and 2 and listened to the critics and I felt that it's a, it's a different difference of perspective you know Genesis 1 is looking at it from a bird's eye view and Genesis 2 is looking at things in in much more intricate detail and once you see the two camera angles uh, and put them together then there's no contradiction that's how I how I see it uh, but if you want me to go into detail about Genesis 1 2 I will do but it's some time since I studied uh, those passages uh, concerning that issue. All I wanted to just bring to your attention is the lack of intellectual honesty from Christians when they're presented with arguments or questions from skeptics, uh, maybe contradictions in the Bible, maybe um, moral issues in the Old Testament, to just automatically move into allegorical mode to offset the criticism one needs to have intellectual honesty there that's all I'm saying however there is there is a precedent for using allegory or using that kind of apologetic which is intellectually honest um, for example the Gospels um, if one looks at the Gospels there is uh, in each of the Gospels there is a a compilation of sermons and parables done in terms of themes or thematic themes and not just in terms of the chron chronological so when someone comes and says well there's a contradiction in the Gospels then it's fair to say when you study the Gospels and study the historical context of literature at that time it is fair to say that um, trying to show contradictions in the chronicle order of the Gospels it's questionable whether that is uh, a fair methodology I'm not saying it's 100% wrong but I'm just saying it's questionable because there are these you know the Gospels are written not just in uh, some kind of chronological but there is a thematic theme of each Gospel 
with a particular perspective, with a particular way of gathering the material and cannot be brought to, we cannot just bring in our western understanding of history in modern times and use that as a critique without understanding the context of the gospels the nature of the genre of literature that we're dealing with so if a christian says well we can look at this maybe that you know it's allegorical or um, thematic in in the approach of the gospels in some cases that would be a fair argument to make and would be intellectually honest um, so intellectual honesty but that also requires intellectual honesty from the skeptic in the skeptic willing to be willing to engage with the nature of evidence and to be, allow the nature of evidence to speak to them so in other words it's no good coming with your own blanket cloak of what a particular genre of literature should be so for example it's no good coming to Genesis chapter 1, 2 and 3 with your own 21st century thinking and saying of what it is a, a literary piece should be but to look at it in its historical context how is this literature written in its time in the culture that it was written and how do I interpret it so in other words let data speak to you and not you impose your method of interpretation on the data but intellectual honesty I think is very hard to find because we're all trying to via and prove our point how many of us are really 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 looking at the nature of the data and allowing the data to speak to us but we change and manipulate the data to suit our skepticism or our faith based position so there's intellectual honesty and then the second issue that I just want to talk about is thorough scholarship on the issue of Adam and Eve etc if a skeptic comes along and says look there are contradictions in Genesis 1 2 let me ask you a question as a skeptic are you honestly looking in a scholarly way have you honestly in depth studied with an open mind with an open Bible and dig deep into the Hebrew and the context etc or is it just that you're coming to bring uh, a contradiction that is apparent to you and that you can easily use it as a way of getting out or believing the Bible getting out of believing God throw it into the lap of the Christians and say haha contradiction end of argument and also deep scholarship from the Christian are you going to be willing when a skeptic ans asks questions and they are intellectually honest are you going to really just dismiss them and say no you're wrong or I can use the allegorical way out of this or, or whatever or are you going to say okay you've asked a fair question look I don't fully understand at the moment but I'll, I'll what I'll do is I'll go back and I'll study the text I'll study it in depth and I'll get back to you so all this video is about really it's not about the specifics uh, it's just about these two issues it's just about I see a lot of lack a lot of intellectual dishonesty from Christians and skeptics and especially when you're on YouTube it's easy to get into uh, them and us type scenario and not really be seeking truth and to allow the data to um, challenge us you know the day you know if you're looking at biological data you've got to look at it from a biological perspective if you're looking at a, a certain genre of literature you've got to understand it from that genre of literature so if the data is the Bible the data of the Bible has a variety of different genres of literature Genesis literature is not the same as the Psalms literature the Psalms are not the same as the gospel literature and when we study the data we've got to understand it in its nature and context 
that requires that's intellectual honesty and then we've got to do it in a scholarly way and tackle the issues head on and that means skeptic and Christian have to be willing to do the spared work of investigation I think these are things are very very rare on either side and sometimes I'm tempted to skip to, to move the goalposts because it, it, it's more of, of trying to prove them wrong and I'm right rather than trying to be intellectually honest and at the same time intellectually vigorous in doing the spared work of thinking I've been tempted on YouTube to move away from high standards and but I think that many many people have moved away from those high ideals and I think all of us are guilty in making um, those mistakes so for what it's worth I'm just challenging us to sort of raise our game really in the next coming weeks and months ahead on this channel thank you